checking the health of the engines before it leaves the pad, Sylvain? Yes, you're right. So the engine on the four boosters and the core stage are all ignited 17 second, seconds before liftoff. And then a thrust is gradually increased to check the engines um, uh, if they are working fine in particular. And then uh, they, they slowly throttle up the engines to full thrust and it's at that point that the vehicle then leaves the pad. Mission control, a couple of uh, things just to run through again before launch. Just watch out for that mobile gantry withdrawing 45 seconds before then we get... Attention pour moins une minute. Then the big grey mast. He's announcing. Stop. À zéro moins une minute. He's announcing one minute to launch. We are orbiting the seventh and eighth satellites in Europe's Galileo Satellite Navigation System for the European Union and the European Space Agency. Yes, so best wishes to all the teams for this launch all of our colleagues and to everybody of course at the du let's sit and watch à tous de DDO attention pour le début de la séquence d'allumage lanceur top à 0-20 secondes largage du MAVKM allumage triétage à tous de DDO Attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top et décollage. Paramètre à bord sont normaux. Wow, always impressive. Yeah. There she goes, uh, hauling herself against the gravity of our planet, which of course is uh, pulling us back down, making life possible here on Earth, but uh, making it very different, difficult to leave. We're burning five engines, one on the main core stage. One on each of those. Du lanceur suivant les trois axes sont nominales. Tous les paramètres à bord sont normaux. One on each of those boosters. He's telling us that everything's going according to plan. Sylvain, your next uh, two satellites have taken off. Yes, you're right. Now we are very pleased that uh, we are off the ground, for sure. Uh, we still have a long journey uh, ahead of us, nearly four hours. But it seems to be a very good start. Yeah. Take a look at the bottom of the screen. You can see on the left, the altitude, we're 16 kilometers above the Earth. De du sont and our cameras have picked up more images there of Soyuz as it hurtles across the sky. If we're lucky, we might even see the boosters falling away in about um, half a minute. At the bottom of the screen is the distance from the pad. That's... That's the distance, uh, if you were to draw a line along the Earth, and on the right-hand side, the speed. We can hear the launcher as it flies over the uh, delayed sound there. And this is the scheduled moment for the boosters to fall away. We don't need them anymore. They have done their job. They have burnt their propellant. And we can see superb images here from a previous launch. And we have confirmation that the separation of the boosters has indeed occurred. So we're burning the main core stage now. Uh, folk here call it the Block A, Sylvain. Yes, you're right. Um, it burns for just under five minutes. So it burns uh, liquid oxygen and kerosene. Little word about confirmations. You might have noticed that we get schedule events and then 
and then slightly uh, later we get the confirmation. That's because uh, we are seeing key moments happening at the right time. But we get the confirmations of those milestones just uh, fractionally later. That's perfectly normal. Yeah, you're right, because it takes um, a little time for the information to get from the launcher to the range operations manager here in the Guiana Space Centre. So that's because it goes uh, via Moscow. He calls out the confirmations once he gets them. And so what we are seeing are the milestones when they are scheduled to happen. There at the front of the vehicle is the fairing. We saw it earlier. It's housing the satellites. They're inside there. It's got several jobs. Uh, most notably, it's protecting the satellites from the rigors of the launch. Yeah. So we are having, for instance, uh, acoustic vibrations at liftoff, so very loud friction. So the, um, the launcher is flying through the dense part of the atmosphere at very high speed, so it's very hot uh, outside the fairing. And that friction is dissipating now because if you look at the bottom of the screen, we're 114 kilometers above the Earth and we don't need the fairing anymore. So, it's well, so we see the golden part there is a frag that. And then on top... And then on top, you see our two satellites with the dispenser in the middle to hold them. If you look on the right-hand side of the screen, you can still see it there. Ah, yes, correct. Then um, you see now we, we start to see the, the panel that will uh, face Earth when it is in orbit. So you see the antennas. Which here. ones are the antennas? The, the, the round part. The round part, uh, there is uh, the navigation antenna, the one which will broadcast navigation signals. And then if he, as it turns, you see now the, the solar panels, the rectangular part. And they're the two grey rectangles facing us. They're going to deploy once we separate the satellites and inject them onto their orbit. You get a better picture of them there. Yes, you see them now again. And they'll unfold like a butterfly coming out of its cocoon. So we are now getting the separation of the second stage. We lit or ignited our third stage engine. And we have confirmation of that, that we have ignited the third stage engine, which we, which we do before we um, get rid of the second stage engine. That's a peculiarity of Soyuz. Here we go. Let's take another look at that uh, launch earlier this evening. That was five and a half minutes ago nearly. Pretty impressive. Mm. Never get tired of seeing that. Les paramètres propulsifs du bloc I sont nominaux. There are uh, uh, various different bodies involved in the governance of the Galileo program, Sylvain. There's, uh, yes, you're right. So uh, ISA is the architect of the, of the system. So we, we design and develop the, the system and we are in charge of uh, making it work. Uh, the GSA uh, is the entity in charge of providing the services. And, uh, and of course, the European Commission is uh, the program manager. Just to explain to anyone who hasn't seen a launch before, top right-hand side of the screen is what we call the trajectory. Uh, the white dot. The white dot on that curve is the actual position of the launch vehicle. The curve itself is the planned trajectory of the vehicle. At the bottom, you can see we're coming up nearly heading towards five kilometers a second. Uh, this is a huge hugely important flagship project for all Europeans. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are launching two additional Galileo satellites. This opens up a new phase for Galileo, leading to a fully deployed constellation and two services. It is the result of a strong commitment to make Galileo a success. And as the new EU Commissioner in charge of Galileo, I share this determination. I would like to thank all of those involved in today's event. Ariane Spass, OHB, the European Space Agency, the French National Space, uh, Space Agency in Kourou, and of course the services of the European Commission. Additional launches are planned in 2015 and in the following years. Each of them will be another step forward for the program. Each of them will be key for Galileo. 
My objective is clear, provide early services by 2016 at the latest and full services by 2020. My strategy is straightforward and focuses on the three areas. Deploying the infrastructure, providing services as they come on stream, and establishing Galileo on the market. And for this to happen, let's work, let's move forward. Thank you. So some important strategies there from uh, the EU, and the European Commission has taken over the role of funding Galileo. Our flight path takes us out. We're heading out across the Atlantic right now from the northeastern tip of uh, South America, which is where we took off from. And, and we'll be heading out across Europe. We'll head out across Russia, uh, down to, across China, Southeast Asia, heading south towards Australia. And that's where we'll be uh, separating our satellites. And we are tracking the vehicle using ground stations yes, as right. she flies over. Yeah. Mm. Many, many of them. So we have a, a boat in the middle of the Atlantic, uh, after the first one. Then we will have a station in uh, Azores, Santa Maria. Then in Osagel, Toulouse. And then we will lose visibility um, for some minutes. And uh, we will arrive uh, near Australia. The Perth station will take it uh, at that moment. Oh, So what um, we've been talking about here is telemetry. The launcher is sending signals to the ground stations. And we've had the signal at uh, the station in Perth. Here we have separation now of the third stage. It's burnt its fuel. We don't need it anymore. Nine and a half minutes into the flight. And we're now starting the next phase of the journey. Frigate, the upper the upper stage is taking the wheel. You can see there the third stage moving away. And Frigate is that gold structure. It's got six spherical tanks and they're organized in a circle. Yeah, uh, four for propellants and two of them for avionics. A bit like we have in a cockpit of, uh, of an aircraft. So for flight control systems, navigation, communication and so on. And the satellites are attached using a special dispenser on top of it. Frigate's getting ready to switch on its engine. It's in what we call the pre-burn phase. It's giving a quick burst of acceleration to push the fluids back in the tanks. And that's to make sure that there's enough propellant to ignite the engine properly. It's a little bit like uh, when you're in a car and you put your foot on the accelerator. So here is the scheduled first ignition of the Frigate upper stage. Uh, for its first burn, it's going to burn.